Howdy. Welcome to my shop. My name's Ron and I'll be your host for the next 10 minutes or so. Uh, being a fourth generation carpenter, wood is my, uh, that's my language. It's my living. It's my hobby. It's my passion. One of those passions is making stocks. I've never had any formal training in this. I just wanted to put a piece of wood on a, on a gun one day and, and I I uh, seemed like that'd be a, a pretty unique challenge, so I tried it, and uh, been going at it ever since. But um, honestly, I owe, I owe a lot of my success to my customers, my friends that have suggested this or that, different ways of doing it for, for to produce a better outcome. And so uh, I appreciate them. I owe them a great deal. The finish that I use was suggested by a friend of mine that owns a gun shop in Georgia, a guy, a guy named Dan. I've uh, been friends with him for many years, and and I and I owe him for that knowledge. So uh, I don't suggest that my way is the only way. Uh, that's that's just not the case. Um, I picked up my my uh, my abilities to do this from watching other people and seeing other things, and then figuring out how to do that. So it's a process. Um, some ways are better cleaner, faster, they require less effort, uh, on and on it goes. So, and I'm open to learning new and better ways. Uh, I'm always looking for that. My grandfather used to say, uh, never let a day go by that you don't learn something. So when I do, I will often look up, thanks Pop, you know, because uh, no matter how old you get, you still need to be learning new, new things. So come on in, see what's going on today. Well, I've got a couple of other guns that are in different stages of being worked on, and I'm drying. I've got stain drying on one and, and finish drying on another, so I'm going to go ahead and start. This is a uh, H&R, an old one, and it's kind of interesting. The, the barrel comes off by re means of this removable pin. It's an interesting, uh, it was actually patented May the 14th of 1901. Uh, who knows exactly how old this is or what model it is. It's uh, It's got some putty right here. It's got a crack right here in the, in the wrist and it goes down through here and cracks across the top. It's just really had a tough life. Uh, somebody's put some real high gloss varnish on it a time or two. But we're going to reproduce it, just replace it. So Away we go. First thing I'm going to do is take take the butt plate off because the butt plate is in good shape. It's still got the original butt plate on it and probably the original screws that came with it. It's uh, it's got a H and R emblem on the plastic butt plate. There's no cracks in it. It's got one little chip, which we're okay with as old as this thing is. That's interesting. I've never seen one exactly this way most of them there's a uh, there's a bolt you know that holds it on to the receiver I've never seen one come this far back that bolt is just right inside the surface <laughs> makes it easy to see and get to these guns typically didn't have a lot of fancy grain to them they were um, just this was just a working man's gun nothing real fancy about it and so I'm not going to put a real fancy piece of wood back on it. The customer, uh, he doesn't want that. He wants it as original as possible. It's got a crack down the inside of this, this forearm right through here is a crack. It's just probably dried out over the years. Now they have, someone has put paper right in here where this rubs up against the front of the receiver. Uh, probably to take up some slack. That's not an unusual tactic. People put a little shim in there. Um, I typically use brass shim stock, you know, four or five thousandths brass, and it takes up that space. Now the customer has requested that I make this a half inch longer than it used to be. This is right now is a 13 and a half inch trigger pull. When I get done with it, it's going to be 14. 
I'm going to take a sander and just clean this up a little bit so I can see the grain in this piece of wood and see uh, there's some some sap wood over here from about here out and from about here out that I want to not get in this. I want to stay with the brown heartwood. So I want to clean that up a little bit. I'm extending this on the front about an eighth of an inch because that needs to uh, that needs to go into the back of the receiver. There's a little space right here in the back of this receiver. There's a little See, the thickness of this wall is, oh, I don't know, a little bit bigger than an eighth. But inside of that, there's a gap right in there. And if you make it to fit this only, because this is on a curb, that stock can rotate this way, and they always do. If you make it to fit inside that slot and go back in there about an eighth, here and here, like a 3030 Winchester, they had that same thing. It keeps them from wiggling this way over the years. That's the butt stock. The forearm, I'm going to take from right next to that. And I'm going to, uh, the, the customer has requested that I make this thing a teeny bit bigger, longer and fatter than what it used to be. What I have done right here is I have started my cuts up here at the front of this where this pencil line is and I've started my cut here at the top of the comb and this end of the forearm here. I've, I've started my cut going this way. This is a straight line. This is a straight line and this one I can draw off the other one. I have a bow in this piece of wood. It curves that way. And I've got plenty of meat. I've got plenty of wood here. So what I'm going to do is straighten this thing with this and this together. I'm going to run it through my planer and I'm going to make this thing uh, a little thinner. But it's also it's going gonna, it's gonna to straighten it this way. And so these lines will be gone when I get done planing. And so I had to mark these lines with a cut to put them back and be able to redraw them.
this this inset that I was telling you about I'm gonna make that thing an eighth of an inch so the front of this thing an eighth of an inch is going to be hidden inside there and then this surface here has got a bevel it bevels in I don't know what the, the angle is it's probably 12 15 degrees but it bevels in to make it bigger on the inside than the outside so it won't come out as it pulls tighter it presses it in and what keeps it from collapsing is the sides are against here Now the top of this thing comes in about that far. And it forms a semicircle in the back of it. 